What is the evidence behind prolotherapy? I'll be discussing some prolotherapy studies. Prolotherapy injection protocols were formalized in the 1950s by George Hackett and later by Gustav Hemwell. Since the 1980s, the number of studies in prolotherapy has accelerated. I will discuss some important studies. In 1987, Onley and his colleagues studied 81 patients with low back pain. One group received prolotherapy and the other was treated with injections of saline and lidocaine. 39% of the patients had more than 50% pain relief on the uh, control group and 88% had more than 50% pain relief on the prolotherapy group. We move now to the 1990s, specifically 1993, where Klein studied 79 patients suffering from low back pain. He also compared the effects of prolotherapy versus injections with saline and lidocaine. 53% in the control group had more than 50% pain relief, but in the prolotherapy group, 77% had more than 50% pain relief. In the year 2000, Dr. Dean Reeves and Hassanane did a very cool study. They assessed the effects of prolotherapy in finger arthritis and knee arthritis. In the finger arthritis trial, he treated 13 patients with prolotherapy. This was compared to 14 patients that received local anesthetic and water injections. This was the control group. Patients treated with prolotherapy had a decrease in pain with movement and an increase in the range of motion. In the knee arthritis trial, 38 knees were treated with prolotherapy. There were improvements in pain, swelling, knee buckling, and there was an improvement in the flexion range of motion. In 2007, Maxwell conducted a study on 36 patients with painful Achilles tendinopathy. For prolotherapy treatment, there was a decrease in pain and tendon thickness. Now we move to a good year in prolotherapy, 2008. I'll discuss three studies, one at the elbow and two in the low back area. Dr. Scarpone and his colleagues studied 24 patients with lateral epicondylosis, also known as tennis elbow. One group was treated with prolotherapy and the other group with normal saline injections. There was a decrease in pain and improvement in strength on the prolotherapy group. On the other study, QC and his colleagues studied 25 patients with sacroiliac joint pain and dysfunction. These patients were, were treated with prolotherapy and he showed an improvement in pain and disability. On this one, Ken and his colleagues studied 37 patients with tailbone pain, also known as coccidinia. 30 of 37 patients express good pain relief. In 2009, Ryan and his colleagues studied 20 patients with plantar fasciitis. These patients were treated with prolotherapy. 16 of 20 patients reported good to excellent results. In 2012, Dr. David Rabago Dr. Jeff Patterson and others studied 36 patients with knee arthritis. These patients received an average of four prolotherapy sessions. The results were very good. There were improvements in pain, range of motion, and stiffness scores. The beauty of the results of these studies is that they followed patients for as minimum as six months and as long as two years. For more information, visit www.totalcare-la.com where Dr. Jose Barreto and Dr. Thomas Vaughn will be happy to see you. Thank you.